Hi, welcome to the Linux channel. See, this is about a query which uh, recently one of the viewer have asked me after he watched uh, one of my old videos. Okay, the video is about uh, you know Linux user space uh, shared memory IPC. So hope you can see there. I have even done a you know demo and uh, live example and stuff. So I'm going to attach that uh, video in case if you are interested. And uh, this is something, you know, often, uh, you know, people learn uh, when they start uh, their career in uh, systems uh, programming about, you know, uh, various IPC mechanisms and I, you found me often telling that I like, you know, sockets uh, and uh, most cases I tend to, you know, prefer sockets, although we can also use uh, shared memory and stuff and uh, I have even explained it as its own advantages, disadvantages. But I thought uh, this video I little emphasize uh, uh, some of the various creative aspects of using shared memory uh, which is not something possible with you know, other uh, uh, techniques okay? and uh, fundamentally how they differ in, in an architectural point of view. See this is one thing uh, I, I see often uh, people tend to learn these things uh, in order to just you know um, most of the cases. Uh, to you know address any questions in the interview and uh, uh, sometimes uh, as they tend to do any uh, you know uh, coding uh, you know or uh, develop any uh, project i mean develop any product uh, as a part of the project you know uh, uh, they may have this components already in place um, by uh, some senior architect and stuff sometimes they just need to do some changes but the, often the question is, uh, you know, where to use what, in which scenario, why this has been incorporated versus something like that. Why something is better may not be incorporated. So things like that. So if you are into, uh, you know, uh, developmental career and if you are in beginning stages, you may even work on projects which contain some type of IPC and, uh, you know, your manager or seniors must have implemented for some reason and sometimes they must have done uh, you know specific implementation uh, which is not you know somewhat easy to maintain or it may you know introduce a lot of bugs and you are constantly working on solving these things and if you have a deep dive and understanding then you can actually port such you know uh, flow of code and uh, change its architecture so that you can improve it much better again it depends some will gravitate to a specific type of you know uh, uh, you know methodology they just stick with that and they tend to use it everywhere just because it is so one of the things is like this you know shared memory also the name as the name says shared memory by the way i'm not going much deeper like i have done in the previous video again which is something if you are looking for you can anyway refer that one. Fundamentally, as uh, you know, the name says shared memory, we create a shared memory address space where we can access via various processes. Okay, so it may look more or like this. So you have various uh, processes. Each has its own uh, process address space, but you need a shared memory resource to you know access between these processes. Then you can create some sort of a shared memory and you can you know access it via various process address space so this is the advantage of having a shared memory hence this works like an ipc because it is actually an ipc because different processes can communicate with a different pid each process has its own pid and uh, as we can represent i mean as we can represent each process as its own address space you know variable address space and this address space, whatever variables you define, whatever data you add, you know put inside this uh, buffers, whatever it is, it is going to be in its private address space, virtual address space. But if you want to share something between different processes, then you can use something like this shared memory. Okay, so this is the idea. But here comes a you know question: What about a process is having multiple threads? So if you have different threads within the same process, so let's take some purple color and we represent this process has some three threads. Okay, this process has some four threads and this has some two threads and this does not have any threads. So in that case, what will happen? So as you get this access of this shared memory, 
okay uh, all these threads are going to have uh, you know access to the same uh, but the question is if different threads accesses this uh, shared memory then what happens is uh, since uh, you know it is a common resource you need to put again locks within the same uh, you know process of different threads so every time any processes you know uses this uh, i mean different processes use this shared memory you need to put locks so that again you get a uh, proper synchronization and then you get this you know uh, exclusive access of this uh, you know common resource because it is a common resource you need to lock it and then you need to access once your access is over you can unlock and then uh, leave it for other so this is the you know uh, drawback of shared memory although you don't have a latency like you know the viewer asked you know lowest latency although you don't have much latency because you are not actually transferring data from one process to other process like other techniques see if you think about uh, this message queues or sockets essentially what we are doing is uh, we have two processes okay and uh, between these two processes we are actually sharing data from here to here and from here to here via an ipc so we can better represent in a different way so we are some ipc this data you can share it here you send it here this data you send it here and so this can be the case of some message queues and uh, say sockets okay etc so this is what it is and this can happen within the same system you can use message queues if it is happening between multiple systems then you should use network sockets and same system you can still use network sockets with you know local host access so this is what is the thing so the drawback is you have some latency you need to deal because technically data is going from here to here and vice versa it goes back from here to here and things like that whereas in the case of shared memory the moment you write it to the shared memory that's the only latency we encounter and any other process can directly exclusively read from there so it is not something you send from here to there and store it in any other buffer so in this case if you send any data from here to here you create a buffer here let's assume we create some buffer and that buffer has to be copied into that you know whatever ipc mechanism it is technically going and getting populated into this you know buffers in this private address space of this process so this kind of transaction happens and from this picture we can see quite evidently one of the main drawbacks is also that we can't do some sort of you know broadcast like stuff actually so it is always between one is to one uh, you know sort of peer to peer or end to end you know uh, connectivity happens in this case it is not one to many okay so in the case of shared memory it is like one to many okay so you can see there this is always one to many versus here it is always like one to one so it is between this process to that process and rest it is always one to one versus in the case of shared memory it is one to many so if you are a beginner okay let me summarize back if you are a beginner and if you are interested in learning all these things you know think like an architect you know where we can apply and what are the implications and what is the advantages what is the drawbacks and just don't go with the market you know industry you know uh, uh, term or industry assumption saying that this is better than that or that is you know not uh, you know uh, better than this things like that okay in the case of shared memory this is one to many but the unfortunate drawback is it is always you know you need locks to synchronize you need to you know apply locks to synchronize this data transactions versus here it is always most cases it is one to one uh, of course message queues again it depends but most cases let's assume network socket it is like one to one but in the case of uh, this thing you don't need no need of locks because you just send it here and there in the case of sockets like a listener is there in the socket server so it goes there and then it receives the data so in the case of that you don't need any type of locks okay provided you need locks okay only if you have any common buffer shared between multiple threads over here okay so if you have this common buffer and uh, let's assume if you have this common buffer okay within this but this is getting shared between multiple threads then you need to have a lock 
but other than that if there is no threads involved and also this is not a common resource of different threads okay conditions apply then uh, you don't need any locks quite understandably <laughs> okay same way in this case you need always locks because it's a shared memory resource but if you have different uh, threads and stuff like that again you need you know uh, same locks within that as well so this locks is anyway going to be helpful with that multi threaded architecture but in the case of this kind of message queues and socket this is always transactional um, it goes data from one place to other place so in that case you don't generally need any i mean you don't need locks at all provided if you split a process in multiple threads then thread level you need some type of lock as one can understand because again that buffer is going to be a shared resource within the same process okay so this is what so if you have any you know further questions on this regard feel free to you know ping me you can uh, send a mail as you know mostly i prefer uh, you know uh, communicating via mails where i can describe much in depth uh, rather than most cases uh, with <laughs> youtube comments because if there is any small query i can address some extent but i can't much extensively send links or illustrate anything in youtube comments so you can perhaps if you think it is a minor query you can uh, you know ping me via youtube comments or otherwise you can send me a mail or even whatsapp linkedin whatever you prefer okay so hope this is quite you know uh, useful and uh, if you are uh, seriously looking for you know becoming an architect and stuff you know understand these concepts it's just not uh, you know you implement for day to day basis you have to understand deeply its various implications never something is better than other thing it all depends on the situation some places this is better some places that is better and if you want a more fail safe approach you know ask me sockets is always a sort of a dumb fail safe approach okay it just works and because again you don't deal with any you know logs and stuff so hence if you ask me my preferred approach is always you know sockets when it comes to ipc but only few cases if you know it is uh, you know taking up lot of latency and uh, you know i can actually use shared memory then i may tend to use shared memory again this is a personal choice i don't uh, you know say everybody to do the same but if you are you know into the you know uh, stages of architecting any uh, framework and stuff consider these aspects and uh, see that what way uh, things are put together as you tend to work in user space components see where you can split into threads and uh, don't just do just for the sake of doing it only if it is needed just you know take it and you know architected in that way okay so do, just don't you know put all things together as a mandatory aspect this again i see often uh, uh, whenever i get any students who are like more than 10 years old or something like that uh, often i see is they tend to use something which is just you know uh, needed to be put it should not be the case only if the architecture demands and weigh all the advantages and disadvantages and then see how best you can architect you can make some mistakes it is fine you can finish as phase 1 and you finish that you know requirement and take your time and sit back and see how you can refine it further as a part of phase 2 endeavor okay so hope these tips are useful for you if you have anything to discuss be in touch thanks a lot for joining me stay tuned have a nice day bye bye